We go to Durban now. Former Etiwini Mayor Zandile Kumete is back in court on graft charges, but there's been a dramatic twist to the case involving a 320 million rand solid waste tender. A shooting at the home of a witness is causing other witnesses to run scared, and rightfully so. And lawyers are expected to present court with a way forward this morning. We have ENCA senior reporter Dayson Tatia, who's at the High Court in Durban and has been following this case. Dayson, good to see you again. Good morning to you. As expected, uh, you know, other witnesses are also feeling apprehensive whether they will give a testimony or not. What are we expecting from court this morning? Good morning, Cindy. Yes, that's right. So the last time we were in court was on Monday when we heard those revelations being put on the record by the state. The state saying that that was the reason that they were not unable to call their next witness. Preceding that, they had had a number of witnesses which were sharing information about the process that was followed during the awarding of tenders. This is around the documentation that was handled, which hands that passed through. And those were the types of testimonies that were coming through during the latter part of the previous week. So this week was meant to be starting off with another municipal employee. That was the witness that you are talking about now, the one whose home was shot at at the weekend. And that's how the court proceedings abruptly stopped because the state had received that information coming through at the weekend. And the witness ultimately saying that she was uncomfortable then with coming to court on Monday and continuing her testimony because it had been perceived as intimidation or a threat. That's what she had believed that that shooting at her home related to. So there is a police investigation also underway in relation to that. It is an attempted murder case that's being, invested by the, uh, that's being investigated rather by the SAPS. And that is a matter that still needs to be resolved. But during the last appearance then, it was decided in court that the state would need a few days to then decide how to proceed and how best to handle this matter. One of those issues arising is what you just mentioned about how the other witnesses who would have been testifying afterwards will be impacted by the decision that was made by this witness to withdraw and secondly, the shooting which resulted in that decision being made. And it begs the question as well, Jason, which takes precedence? In other words, your, your right and call to duty to do the right thing and elevate uh, cases of criminality, fraud, particularly when it happens at a municipal level, uh, impacting taxpayers' monies. If you are subpoenaed as a witness to come in and, and give testimony, and yet your life is threatened, you know, it's a very tough decision to make. And whether the state can compel you, as a pin you, even under those circumstances, for you uh, to, to give witness? Those were the conversations that were meant to happen between the state prosecution team as well as the investigating officer that was dealing with this matter because they now needed to find solutions to allow those witnesses that needed to testify, uh, you know, they needed to find out how they could do this in a safe manner. So there are a number of options that are available and we are expected to hear that in court today. So what is the way forward? The state has uh, said to the court that they would be in, oh, they would be back today to outline a plan or a provisional plan of how they expect to deal with it. For example, one of these options may be using virtual hearings. The other would maybe be to hold the, the proceedings in camera. So there are a variety of, of options that are available. Now we just need to see which one will apply to these witnesses because the next few, the next that the state had on the list, were also employees of the Etekwini municipality. So that would have placed them in a situation where I would assume as a result of what's happened, they then felt compromised and as a result of that decided that they were not comfortable to proceed up until this point. All right, we'll get in touch with you again, Dayson, as soon as court proceedings are underway. Thank you indeed for your time. Uh, we're speaking to Dayson Tathia. He is an ENCA senior reporter outside the Durban High Court where former Mayor Zandile Kumete and 21 other co-accused uh, will be making their appearance, as you heard on Monday, that the uh, case was abruptly adjourned due to the fear from uh, the chief witness um, who said that their home had been attacked, you know, fired at over the weekend and therefore they feared for their lives and will no longer be appearing. We'll give you the details as that story develops.